Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Do you want to win this awesome handmade crossbow? Then stay tuned. You might have guessed it. This video is again sponsored by my great, great, great sponsor, Vikings, War of Clans. And actually this time it's all about the crossbow. But let's first look at the game itself. As you probably know, the game is, is incredibly successful. There are now so many players, more than 20 million players. Um, and so many downloads. You have so many people that play the game simultaneously. So it's really refreshing. So it's kind of funny because you know, more people play the game than we ever had Vikings on the planet. <laughs> and, but still, it is a cool game because it's, it's more a little bit like a mixture between strategy game and also uh, it's great graphics in 2D and 3D. Um, I love it that you have all the time in the world to play. And you can decide what you want to do. Do you want to conquer the land? Do you want to kill your enemies? <laughs> Do you want to trade? Do you want to build something? It's all up to you. You decide. The game is available for uh, iOS and also for Android, of course, and you can download it from the links below. And if you do, you get a shield and you also get 200 gold coins so that you can get cool outfits like crossbows, maybe. <laughs> now this time my sponsor came to me not with a simple challenge, but with um, some request for my expertise. You probably know that pretty Viking lady that is shooting the crossbow from that uh, boat onto the uh, owner of the castle, probably a king, uh, with a crossbow. And they say, okay, this is our idea about how a crossbow should look like for Vikings. Um, now, is that possible? Is that a good idea how to build a crossbow? I'm no professional crossbow man and there's a lot of things that I cannot do but I've built several crossbows rubber powered and also powered by other stuff um, that I, I happen to know quite a bit about it and I'm today uh, I want to share this knowledge with you. Now let's look at the crossbow from the video. There's a few design flaws that are very apparent. The first design flaw is as you can clearly see that the shape of the shaft is kind of curved and it, if you look at pictures from medieval crossbows like this one here where you see many what you notice is that this isn't how you make a crossbow with a groove or an arrow this this kind of curved form is more like from a baluster or kugelschnapper as it's called in german and these are bullet shooting crossbows that mostly were used for bird hunting and recreational uh, shooting uh, those weren't really war bows so, and they of course needed the free flight for the ball that was shot. But for an arrow that doesn't work. As you can see the arrow is kind of half suspended in air and it would actually drop down just because of the gravity. And it would never shoot that way because the string would only stay in contact with the bolt for a few centimeters. So that is something that would never work. You need a continuous arrow rest or at least an arrow rest in the front. The second very apparent design flaw is that the sights, which is like this little index finger hook thing um, that is used, that one would be in the way of the string. So it would be hit by the string quite early on. And in this little video it seems like it's passing that piece just by magic. And that of course would not work. The, uh, the rear sight on a crossbow like this always has to be behind the string and behind the lock automatically or maybe above, but it certainly can't be in the way. You can also see that the prod or the bow of the crossbow is far too low. This means, and it's also not angled. This would mean that as soon as the string has passed this little, uh, this little sight, for some reason by magic or so on, it would immediately drop down to be aligned with the direction of the bow. And therefore, if, if that would still be hooked into the arrow, the arrow would probably go wild, like upwards or something, but not in the direction that we want. Now the next thing is how do you cock that crossbow? It is certainly a light crossbow. There's a difference between light, medium and heavy crossbows in medieval times. A light crossbow is something that you can cock with your arms, usually by means of a stirrup. So because this frees both of your hands and arms so that you can lift the string up with both arms. And there's no way that this lady could have cocked that crossbow that's strong enough to shoot uh, an enemy over probably 30 meters or something uh, with, with just one arm. So this would need a stirrup. Just to complete the information here, a medium heavy crossbow would require something like a cocking lever that you can use for cocking it just on one motion. 
um, and a heavy crossbow that often had like a thousand pounds of draw force needed some kind of a, like a crane quin or something like that something mechanical that gives you more force than just a lever so the heavy crossbows need a long time to reload but they are the, the, the power is awesome but what we are looking at here is a light crossbow what you can also see is that the arrow is not clamped in and you need something that gives the arrow some kind of guidance because if you don't do it then even if you have a groove over the full length very often the string would kick the bolt out of the way and it would go wild and crazy. Uh, so it would not be accelerated all the way and it therefore would lose all accuracy and a lot of its power. So you need something to clamp down or you need to guide it over the whole length or at least you need to guide it in the front. But that obviously doesn't happen here. Let's look at the bolt itself. Now clearly you see that it has a groove but for some reason the lady put it on wrong. She would have to t turn it around 90 degrees so that the notch would align with the string, which it doesn't do in this, in this picture here. And um, also you can see that the bolt does not have any veins, but it has like a steel part right in the middle, a little bit more to the rear, which would mean that the bolt is less or probably not front heavy at all. That is a problem because you need a front, a very front heavy bolt so that the, uh, the bolt will fly straight um, even though it does not have any fletching and no veins. So a lot of medieval crossbow bolts were not veined but they had to be very heavy in the front and far and far more lightweight towards the rear. So this bolt design would not work. So my job is to build a crossbow that is much like the one in the video but it needs to be functional, it still needs to be a light crossbow and it has to eliminate all the issues that we have seen were wrong with the original idea of the game designers. And this is what I came up with. <laughs> the Vikings crossbow replica. Let me show you its features. As you see, it is constructed from light wood as well. And actually I was starting out with just a normal board, just a normal board made of pine. So this is the board that I was using, simply a two meter piece of uh, pine wood, uh, very, very inexpensive wood. And of course it's pretty bland, typical European wood, not very strongly grained and uh, very light. I cut it into three pieces and uh, put them together so that they form a crossbow and I even fitted in the bow and fitted in uh, the trigger and, and the nut. So it was basically a shooting crossbow after that. And then I added the arrow guide and then I shaped it somewhat and in the end it looked like a nice crossbow but it was still very bland and not nearly as nice as the one in the video. It needed some staining and I did this by burning it first and then oiling it with teak oil. And now I gotten the strongly grained wood that I wanted. So here it is. <laughs> Would you think that this is made from the cheapest wood that you can get? I kind of like this burnt look and how strong the grain is now popping out. Very nice. <laughs> but let's come to the features. So first of all I'm using a fiberglass uh, prod because one of the things that I need to learn is how to make a prod from wood. I think I need to get that know-how but I don't have it at the moment. Therefore I was buying like a 45 euro fiberglass prod, 170 pounds of draw force for the Xbo Jaguar crossbow. And you can get this on Amazon or you can get it at bow, bow and archery stores. And um, therefore it makes a great replacement for it because it's also lightweight and it's not metal. It's just, just not wood. Also it's using a, a, a thin string just like the crossbow in the video. You know the heavier crossbows used very 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 thick strings. But here a thin string is what you need. Otherwise you cannot shoot these arrows with a notch at the rear. And as you see, I solved the issue with the stirrup by using hemp rope. It's something that the Vikings certainly had access to. And this is as strong as uh, required for the 175 pounds. I used them looped and very lightweight and uh, not metal. That would have been very expensive in the Viking uh, era. All right, and then you can see that there is a groove, the full length. 
and you can also see that the arrow is guided in the front so that it cannot really misalign itself and notice that this is even has space for some some veins even though the bolts that are made don't have any veins but this could also of course be a tubular arrow guide but that would bring me into legal trouble in Germany because then I would be shooting something through a tubular barrel. These two small wooden rods here actually catch the string and this is necessary because otherwise this whole thing would be blown to pieces at the first shot. So something needs to stop the string from traveling onwards. Then we have the lock mechanism which is a rolling nut and this actually is an authentic medieval design. So this rolling nut here, it rotates around this axis here and as you see you can put the string beneath here. And once you pull the trigger, the nut turns and the shot falls. And as you see the nut is slotted and I've been using some metal for the sides and there's wood in the middle because this has to hold 175 pounds of draw force and wood would not be good enough. So a little bit of metal is needed here too. So I took these two parts out to show you how it works because the original crossbow is glued together and not screwed like it would have been done in the Viking era and therefore I cannot take it apart now to show you how it works but here are the two moving parts mounted to this demonstrator board. As you see the trigger here actually it is uh, reinforced with metal so there is metal on metal and uh, no direct wood and um, the nut is in position and if I pull the trigger then the shot falls. Very simple and to cock it again I would simply turn it until it's in shooting position again then this thing would, powered by this little spring here, fall into place and I'm ready for the next shot. Like so. <laughs> Now the big advantage of this system is that friction isn't very important because when the shot falls there is not a lot of friction between the string and the, uh, and the nut here. There is a lot of friction here so for pistol sized crossbows like the one that I was building there will be a lot of tension on this here so the trigger pull would be quite hard and you would have to use all four fingers to move it. But the string is something that is much more vulnerable and therefore the low amount of friction here is actually a very positive side of that lock construction. Now it needs sides just like in the, in the video but uh, those are rather ugly. They just have to be very high and behind the rolling nut but because they're ugly I made them removable so I can take this off and use it just to aim uh, instinctively or you could put it on again at any time and when you want to aim it is fairly simple. You simply align the front side with the rear side, like so. Since I was using so little metal to make it, it is super lightweight. So this only weighs about 1100 grams, which is really super lightweight. And of course it could have been longer with a longer stock, but the one in the video obviously had no rear stock and therefore I didn't put one in here anyway. So this is more like a half pistol and it's also very short. And I made myself a few bolts, actually from beech wood dowels, 10 millimeter diameter. And I used some steel tube here and um, I was using 8 millimeter threaded rods here to form the tip. Now those bolts are extremely front heavy. Let me see where the point of balance is. Yeah, it's about here. See, so it's very front heavy. And this is needed because otherwise the thing would not fly stable but it would start to tumble and uh, go sideways. So that's what you don't want. Also notice how pointy those are. And they're all grooved at the end here. So we've got little notches in here for the string. That is an essential part of the design and is also something that you could see in the Vikings video. The only thing is of course that we will turn them around 90 degrees so that they actually catch the string. Okay, let's now cock the weapon, put the bolts down first and then uh, my foot is a little, little big for this here <laughs> and then you simply pull up and get this thing over the nut like this. And now as you can see the entire 175 pounds is resting on this nut but it's holding it just fine. Now we are loading in the bolt, of course it's a muzzle loader and 
we put it through the nut here until it engages in the string and now it's very firmly in place. You can rattle this thing around and nothing's going to happen. And it has this deadly, deadly tip in front. <laughs> you can win this crossbow together with three balls that are left after my brutal tests. <laughs> All you have to do is write into the comment page underneath this video what you specifically like about the game and what part of the game you think they should improve to make it even better. And in one week there will be a drawing. Mind you, you have to be 18 to win this crossbow, otherwise I'm not going to send it to you. And in one week I will uh, do a drawing and then someone will get this beautiful, beautiful handmade crossbow. Okay, so it's 10 meters distance and there is my trusted archery mat. Let's see if we can hit it. Okay, that went a little bit to the left. Let's try again. All right. Okay, shot number three. Okay, now the group size is rather poor, <laughs> but keep in mind that the iron sights, which are actually wooden sights, are actually pretty, uh, pretty raw, so this means that there's a lot of room for tolerance. I think with some practice I could bring together the, uh, the groups to a smaller size. There is a lot of power. See how deep these things penetrated. So I'm very happy with the power of these bolts. They're also really heavy. Each one weighs almost 50 grams. That's like almost 800 grain. So these are very heavy bolts and that is common for medieval type crossbows. Now we did see that the angle of the, uh, of the uh, bolts that stick in was a little different and that is typical for unveined arrows. The front heaviness will mean that there's always tra they're always traveling with the tip first, but there is some kind of wobble because it lacks the stabilization from the veins that you know, actually have air resistance and therefore stabilize this thing in flight. Therefore, a crossbow bolt will always wobble a little bit, but so certainly the tip will always fly first. Now, let's shoot at the broad side of the barn from like 30 meters distance to see if those would still fly tip first, like they would have to be to make that hit from the video possible. Okay, now I wouldn't be accurate enough to hit the archery mat from this distance, but I think I can hit the broad side of the barn. Let's see if they stick in, because that's what we want to find out. Then you will also probably see the wobble in flight a little bit. That sounded like it hit. There it is. It actually hit a lot higher than I thought, so the bolts must fly very fast, since there was almost no visible drop. And they stick in very hard. Actually, the impact was so hard that the rear end of the shaft broke clean off. All right, let's try again, and this time I will aim a little bit lower. I think they fly pretty good. I think that part of the video in the game is actually confirmed. Okay, that worked pretty good. As you see, it's sticking in very straight and also fairly deep into my poor barn. Let me see if I can get it out again. Oops, no, I guess I did not. Well, I think I can use the pliers and reuse the tip. Uh, this is easy to make anyway. Clearly, these unveined bolts will fly true enough and stable enough to perform the hit as shown in the video. After all, she didn't exactly hit the man, but he only, she only hit him in the shoulder and not in center mass like she was aiming for originally. So, of course, we now have to test if that bolt from the light crossbow would be able to penetrate the uh, king's clothes in flesh. And therefore, we are using ballistic gelatin. <laughs> and of course, to make it more realistic, I again put on my leather skin, which is really from a car cleaning leather. But that's not good enough today because we also want to add some clothing, since it's clear from the video that the guy was wearing some kind of a heavy tunic. First, a little piece of cotton, which is probably wrong because there was no cotton in the Viking Age. But anyway, that's like the undergarment. And then this piece of heavy clothing from an old bathrobe. So put this over it as well. So we now have two layers of clothes and the skin and the gelatin, of course. Okay, let's go for it. 
and fire. <laughs> yeah, that looks like one dead king. Bad luck for the guy. Clearly, it easily penetrated the whole thing, the bathrobe, the t-shirt, the skin, the gelatin, and it even you know, embedded itself, I'd say, a good five inches into the uh, brand new archery mat. So, even from a longer distance, this would be absolutely deadly, and yes, it would be able to wound or even kill the king from the distance that the uh, Viking lady shot at. Time for a conclusion. Well, this one here definitely, even though it's only a light crossbow and it's made from very cheap wood and it's also not heavy at all, is possible to achieve the hit as shown in the video. It would be possible to hit someone from a distance like that with some practice and it would also mean that the shot is way more powerful than needed for the task. So, yes, it is possible, very viable, and that's why these crossbows were very popular in medieval times. I know that a lot of people say the Vikings didn't have any crossbows. Truth be told, I believe they did have crossbows, probably just ones like this, made from wood, so they wouldn't last. They would not be valuable enough to be given from one generation to the next, because there's so little metal in them. Um, because, you know, if you know how to make a bow, and the Vikings did know how to make great bows, it is so easy to devise a crossbow like this or even cheaper in design. So I would be totally surprised if the Vikings did not have invented crossbows at all. All right, so please don't forget to download the game, play it a little bit and leave your opinion about it in the comments section so that you can win this awesome crossbow. But in any case, I hope you like this because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye-bye.